Okay, everybody, new project today. What we have is a cedar chest made by Lane. Still has its um, guarantee here. It's got the Lane logo inside. Don't know what this means, but aroma tested, pressure tested. It's missing a little molding that holds that in place, but easy to repair. Missing moldings here, bit dated, more than a bit dirty. We're gonna change the design of this and update it a bit, give it a more of a modern twist. Okay, so we got this piece all cleaned up now, washed it down, it's dried overnight. Now we need to remove this molding here, which is not too hard to do. It wasn't really on there that great. And we're just gonna give these a little sand where these moldings were. Okay, all that's nice and smooth now. Um, what I'm gonna do is all these little lines here, I am going to fill them. I'm gonna bondo them because we are going to paint this piece. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. One side feels pretty good. Um, just needs a few, few areas more. And one side feels pretty bad. That feels pretty bad. So we're going to have to go over again with Bondo. Sand it again. Just keep doing that till we get a flat surface there. Okay, Alex has gotten the front of this piece all beautiful and put the design on there. It looks fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So we've sanded down with a 220 um, to get it prepped for the paint. What I noticed when I was sanding was that there was a few little gouges that um, needed to be bondoed. So I've put bondo on those. We're going to wait on those to set up and then we will get some paint on this piece and make it beautiful once again. If you'll notice I've left the lock in and the reason is that this lock is going to get replaced. If any of you know this or not, but if you have a Lane Cedar chest that was made before, I believe 1974, I'll check that number for you and flash it on the screen if it's incorrect. You can get a replacement lock if it's not a child safety lock. And what this does is it makes it so that a child can't get locked into the chest. The new locks that they send you free of charge, you can, you can fix it so that the chest won't lock when the lid is shut automatically. So it keeps a child from suffocating in the chest and I've ordered a new lock for it. They're free of charge. If you have a lane cedar chest and it doesn't have that child safety lock, be aware that you can get one sent to you for free. All you need is the serial number um, off the bottom or the back or sometimes it's on the lid of the chest. But get that lock changed out and keep keep children safe. So we've ordered a new lock for this. So it doesn't matter if this one gets paint on it because it's gonna be replaced with a new lock and the key. So we will have that in a couple of days. And that way when this goes to its new home, it'll be nice and safe. We're gonna go ahead and get some primer on this piece. I'm using a Zinser 123 primer. It's tinted gray. I usually get my bonding primer tinted gray because if I do black or, you know, anything navy, anything dark, it really helps to have that, that step already done. Um, I don't suspect that this piece is going to bleed. That's why we're only using the bonding primer. If this were cherry or something that was a darker wood, I would probably use the Zinser Benz primer. That's my, my go-to. I love that primer. I love the one, two, three as well. But if you're looking to block tannins from coming through, um, you're going to want to use the Zinser Benz. 
if you don't have to worry about those tannins or stains, then the 123 primer will do just fine. And since the Benz primer is running about $75 a gallon right now, if you can, you know, use something that's less expensive but still just as effective, then that's what you do. So we're going to get masked up and get some primer on this piece. Edward Hudson Lane started the Lane Company in 1912 in Alta Vista, Virginia. The company did not do well at first. It kind of struggled along until uh, around the time of the First World War, where they then contracted with the Army to produce pine ammunition boxes. In the 1920s, they really reached a high by using the knowledge that they had acquired doing the pine ammunition boxes and taking that and making cedar chests. Then they started calling them hope chests. They were chests that young women would put the things in, linens, um, bed clothes, uh, tablecloths, things like that, that you would start a home with. And they started calling them hope chests. It was the hope of a home. We'll come back to this. Okay, so we've got the primer all put on and we're just gonna wait on that to dry and then we will put some color on this piece. Now, something else that I did before I even started priming, I taped up the back of this piece because I don't want any overspray on the back. Um, it just, it just would not look nice and I like a nice clean finish. Okay, that's everything feeling nice. Let's give it a bit of a wipe down with a tack rag. During the Second World War, they used their advertising and would show pictures of GIs giving hope chests to their sweethearts before they left to go to war. Um, it was a signal that he was ready to commit to marriage and a home, and they showed images of that and their taglines were um, the gift that starts the home. Okay, so we've got this piece all finished. It looks absolutely stunning. Lovely soft pink with a nod to its 1950s heritage with the design on the front. Beautiful new feet to give it a more updated look. And we'll put a link for those in the description box. And I hope you enjoyed the video.